I had been quite successful as a home builder in Raleigh and had a lot of respect from many other builders in the community. I grew up in a small town in upstate New York. I think he had an ideal mix of passion for building. So when he was little, he used to go out into the woods with his brother Bob and build little cabins in the woods near, near the house where they grew up. And so he's always been really passionate about building, right? He's always really had this, this uh, spark for, for building things. My father was Mr. Everything in my town. He was chairman of the Board of Education. He was president of Rotary. He was chairman of the Hart Fund. He was head vestryman of the church. He did everything in our community and set an example that I wanted to follow. In addition, my sister married an Episcopal priest and she spent her entire life doing good. When I first got out of school, I was, I did get on my church council. I, I was treasurer of my children's preschool. Thomas Gibson loved to take on projects. He's not very good Still to this day, he's not great at sitting still. He likes doing things. And he's passionate about building. And it's, for, for him, building was never just a job. It was a passion. Um, and so growing up, it was like every year there was a new project. It was either building a friend or a family member's, framing out their house. I spent a lot of my early years of my career making money. So I thought all along that if I saved money early on, I could use the money more effectively later than earlier to do good. Uh, in, I think in 1989, the director of Hab Habitat came to my office one day and said, I'd like to build a house in a week. Can you help me? And I said, I really don't know how to do that. I've never done it. I mean, the average house or the average affiliate in the country is about a five to six month project from beginning, from laying the footings to building the house up to closing. It's a six month project. A couple months later, we built this house and we were able to get it done in a week. And here you have a house that is pretty much done in a week. It's, it's phenomenal. Approximately 10 years later, I was part of a, a group called Friends of Habitat. And one of the conversations was, how can build, we get builders more involved in our effort? And I said, I didn't know you wanted builders. I thought you wanted volunteers from churches. And he said, well, we'd like to build more houses, and if we could get builders involved, we might be able to do that. I was like, oh, you need nine more builders? Well, I'm one. And he said, and I, I can get eight other guys. You know, and I was like, come on. Is he just talking, or is he going to deliver? Um, because, you know, a lot of people just talk. Well, it became clear that Tom wasn't just talking, but because he could make stuff happen. In order to qualify for Habitat House, you have to have a need, which means you have to live in substandard housing. You have to provide documentation that you can afford the house, that you're financially responsible. You have to work, depending upon the location in the country, uh, two to four hundred hours of sweat labor to qualify for a home and then you buy the house and you have a mortgage except it's an interest-free mortgage which means the payments are significantly less than they would be if you had a typical mortgage but every Habitat homeowner has a mortgage just like you and I do. You learn quickly that this isn't just hey any just freebie just give it away They're, they are completely uh, engaged in this home. They, they have to be willing to go do other volunteer work on other people's homes. And, and Habitat, I think, has done, from what I can tell, an amazing job of deciding who they uh, 
allow to receive these homes. I know at one time, I, I think if they had a thousand applicants, maybe there's 50 that actually make it all the way through the vetting process. And at the end of a week or so, I had 12 builders that agreed to participate in this program and build a house in a week in about a year, a year later. We spent a year planning this effort, had meetings monthly. Individual builders may have individual subs that will work on certain facets of the home. So you would, uh, you would try to get them to commit to these categories of what they were doing. There may be an overall supplier that's supplying the lumber or the sheathing or the windows. There could be national partners that were supplying the windows for the whole habitat. Uh, and a lot of times they have uh, big warehouse containers that are there staged with a lot of that supply, equipment, or material uh, on site. So it's a combination of national uh, participation and local vendor and I would say subcontractor labor force to build the homes. It's, it is a big commitment and the more, the more homes you do as well. So one, just having lot availability, uh, that was one of the first challenges. Do we have the lots that we could come in and do all these in one week and have all these on one street? So logistically, a lot of things have to be put in place as well because of all the, the staging and pre-staging and supply to the sites. That, that in and of itself is a whole nother, you know. But if you didn't have that infrastructure uh, put in place and all that pre-planning in place, then being able to build them in a week, it would not happen. One of the concerns I had was uh, people not showing up to work because it might rain the first day of the first build. And so I, I said to everyone, let's not decide remotely whether or not we're going to build. Let's be there at 7 o'clock Monday morning, be ready to build. If it's raining, we'll go home. And it turns out that it was raining Sunday night until about 5 o'clock in the morning. But everybody did show up and everybody started work at 7 o'clock, so we got the project going properly. The Builder Blitz was Tom's brainchild, you know, idea of, hey, not just a house within Habitat, but what happens if a, a local group of builders pooled their resources, pooled their, their efforts, and almost started giving away a community at a time, not just a house at a time. And at the end of the week on Friday, the homes were complete. They were ready to move into. They were 100% complete. So um, I was eight years old when we moved over here. Um, before we moved here, I had lived in apartments. Um, we lived with other family members. It changed my life because it showed me that, you know, a lot of people that I grew up with, like and my friends outside of this neighborhood, their life was crazy, you know? Cause you know, I have, a, my mom was a single parent, but because we had our home, we had stability. We had, you know, we knew our lights were gonna be on. We knew that, you know, we had somewhere to go to that we didn't have to worry. So a lot of my friends, it's like, our experience was very different because they never knew, like, if they were gonna have to get kicked out. And the fact that we're adults now, and now I have to think about, like, what this is, I'm just, it's, it's life changing to know that my mom was able to do this through this program and I'm just so grateful. I don't know. The first build in Raleigh was in 2002 where we built 12 houses. Next year we decided to double that and do 24 houses. But when we did 25 homes in one week, it went from dirt and curb and street to a whole community in one week. So it was exponential. My wife, Pat, and I were waking up on the morning of the build starting in Raleigh in 2003 where we were going to build 24 houses in a week. And she said to me, she said, well, what are you going to do after this, Tom? I said, well, we can't do 48 houses in Raleigh. She said, well, this is a program that could work everywhere. This should be done in every city in the country. Why don't you work on that? Two Habitat employees and I and a couple of the builders that had participated traveled to 30 or 40 cities throughout the country to try to get builders involved 
and the Habitat affiliates involved because they have to work together to do this project. Uh, we had approximately 850 homes signed up to do the build in 2006, but a, a good number of them dropped out for various reasons in the last couple months. So t Tom did have uh, an uphill climb to try to convince everybody because it started with a concept that took best part of a year to get designs done, to get prep work done, and the planning that it took. And we ended up doing 459 homes in one week in 2006. We had a single mom and her daughter, and we got to know them. When she got the keys to the house, and the house was hers, and their family got to move in, and the, the little girl got to go up to her room, and it was a special ceremony where they each got to talk rather emotionally and pulled the whole weekend together. We decided to skip a year and do the next build in 2008. We did, I think, 270 houses in 2008 and then did a similar number in 2010 and 2012 and kept going at about that rate. And, and that spawned this whole national movement. It's called Habitat for Humanity, National Builders Blitzer. And then, and then Tom was involved in that for, for quite a few years. And uh, so it was this great thing. And I, it still exists in, in corners of the, the, the country. There are... uh, since then, over 3,500 homes have been built throughout the country by home builders at a fraction of their cost. Habitat has been special in my heart because it makes such an impact on kids. I'm really glad my mom, she, when we left New York, my mom was in an abusive relationship with my father, you know, and it was just really bad. We came, my mom came here with nothing. She had $5 in her pocket. And so the fact that she has this now is, it's amazing, you know. Anytime that I've ever been associated with Tom, uh, the outcome has been greater than whatever my initial expectations were. I think that he has this drive and this ambition it's like a freight train. If you get in the way, watch out. <laughs> I have my children. My sister's successful. My brother's successful. I'm successful. So this is like really life changing. This this was really life changing for her. For us. Yeah, if you ever doubt that an idea can make a difference, just talk to Tom Gibson. Heartstone Builder Award goes to Thomas Gibson, a great custom builder. Let's give him a round. And he has a lot of talents, but chief among them is his ability to think big, like real big. But I think Tom was like this, this cheerleader. And very encouraging to his colleagues. And I think most of them were younger than Tom. And I think that they looked at Tom, he had a very successful career in building, and uh, had done very well financially. And they said, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. And he's excited and he's um, gonna do this for the community. So I'm in, I'm all in. 